What is going on guys? This is Crozen and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 companion build. This time we are finally on a Starian and I've been wanting to do an Astarian build for so long. So I call this one the Bard Mancer Rogue. It's essentially a Swords Bard slash Thief Rogue build but not in the traditional way. With this one I wanted to make it more unique and thematic towards Astarian. So we will be using a Swords Bard for the beginning portion of the game, but we will be using melee weapons with this one. We're also going to add a little bit of necromancy, so we will be able to summon a couple of skellies as well as a fire elemental. And I feel like that really fits Astarian's vibe because he does take interest in the necromancy of Thay. So you have a very unique and interesting way to play Astarian here, and I think you guys are really going to love this build. So let's take a look at it. So beginning with our starting class and our ability points, we want to start out as a bard. And for the two cantrips, I like to go with Vicious Mockery and Mage Hand here. For our four spells, I go with Healing Word, as well as Long Strider, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and Thunder Wave. I feel like this gives you a good diverse spell set here. Between a bonus action healing spell with Healing Word, Utility with Long Strider, CC with Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and a nice kickback spell with Thunder Wave. So for our ability points, there's really going to be three abilities that are going to be significant for this build. Those are Dexterity, Constitution, and Charisma. So I recommend 16 Dexterity and Charisma, and then bump up your Constitution to 14 for our Concentration spells, mainly Hold Person and Hold Monster later on. And then we will need 12 Intelligence, as this will give us an extra prepared spell from the Wizard side of things. That way we can get some more Necromancy spells going on. And that leaves us with 8 Strength and 8 Wisdom. For our skill proficiencies, I go with athletics and acrobatics here. That way we can counter our eight strength and that helps us resist being shoved. And then I also go with stealth. So our next step is going through our level path all the way up to level 12. So our main goal right now is to go six straight levels in a bard in order to get that extra attack. So we do get an additional spell at level two. I just go with Cure Wounds, but you can also go with Speak with Animals here, especially if your main character doesn't have this. So go ahead and level up, and once we get into level 3, we will get our subclass, which we want to select College of Swords, and we get our Fighting Style, which you want to go ahead and select the two weapon fighting, since we will be dual wielding with this build, and then we get our Flourishes. So you really got three flourishes going on here between Slashing Flourish, Defensive Flourish, and Mobile Flourish, but there's really only going to be two flourishes that you're going to use the majority of the time. Those are going to be Slashing Flourish whenever you have two or more enemies. And then if you want a more defensive route or if it's only a single target enemy, then you can go with Defensive Flourish and that will also increase your armor class by four when you hit it. And then we do get an additional spell as well as unlock level two spells. The main spell that you're going to use with this build is going to be Hold Person. Maybe not so much at level 3, but once you get into Act 2 and Act 3, this thing is going to be a staple for you. So what Hold Person will do is it will actually shut down the enemy where you can always get critical hits when you are within melee range. And this also holds true for your summons. So your summons can also get criticals, which is pretty neat with this build. And once you get into Act 3, you will be able to use Hold Person as a bonus action, which really spices things up and adds for some pretty cool combos, especially while you are dual wielding. But you may not need to get Hold Person at level 3. There are actually very good utility spells that you can get here between Invisibility, if you are trying to pickpocket or get past a certain area, or Heat Metal. So you do have some options at level 3, but just keep in mind that Hold Person is the quintessential bard spell. So now that we're level 4, we do get an additional cantrip spell and a feat. So for the cantrip, you could either go with friends or a minor illusion here. Both are pretty useful, though you do got to be careful with friends. And then for the spells, if you did select hold person at level 3, then you can select invisibility or heat metal here, as both of them have very good uses in Act 1. And then for our feat, we're just going to go with ability improvement and raise up our dexterity to 18. So now that we're level 5, we unlock level 3 spells, and there's two really good level 3 spells that I like using on a bard. Those are Glyph of Warding and Hypnotic Pattern. 
So the main benefit with Glyph of Warding is that you can produce an AoE sleep and you can still get criticals on those enemies. The problem is it's an abjuration spell so that means you can't use this as a bonus action later since it's not an enchantment or an illusion spell. And the other one that I like here would be Hypnotic Pattern. Hypnotic Pattern is great for those enemies that are non-humanoid. That way you can still hypnotize them. You will not get criticals with this but they will be CC'd for two turns. So either one of these works here, they're both going to be very useful for your build. So now that we're level six, we get our main subclass feature and that is extra attack. That is why we wanted to go six straight levels in a bard. We also get another spell. So if you did get Glyph of Warding, now is your chance to go ahead and select Hypnotic Pattern. Now that we're level 7, we could do some very interesting things with multiclassing. So what I like to do here is multiclass into a rogue. That way we can unlock our sneak attack. And then once we hit level 8, I like to multiclass into an additional class, which will be wizard. And the main reason here is that we do get level 4 spell slots unlocked. And we can spell scribe scrolls with a wizard which means we can upcast and animate dead and get three skellies to follow us around, which really adds to the vibe of this build. So we do get three cantrips here. What I like to do for these cantrips is just select minor illusion, light and shocking grasp. And then for our six spells that we unlock, there's two that are going to be very useful for the entire game really. And those are going to be shield and magic missile. From there, you can select anything else that you want. I just go with find familiar, Grease, Enhanced Leap, and Feather Fall. And then we do get two prepared spells because we do have 12 Intelligence. So make sure that you do scribe those scrolls and that way you can get Animate Dead and that way you can upcast this to a level four, get your three skeletons. And then as we progress later on in the game, we will also be able to conjure a Fire Elemental by spell scribing one of those. And we can also get Hold Monster this way, which is going to be very useful since we're not going to be able to get this on the Bard side. And we can still paralyze a creature that is non-humanoid. So now that my crazy level path is out of the way, what we can do at level 9 is just go back into a Rogue. And we're going to put the next two levels in a Rogue. That way we can unlock our subclass, which we want to go with Thief. That way we get fast hands and we gain an additional bonus action. So go ahead and level up there and then once we get to level 11, I know it looks enticing to go for this feat now, but we really want to go back into a bard and get that feat at bard level 8. The main reason is we keep progressing with spells and that's really what we want here. So we do get an additional spell, we unlock level 4 spells at bard level 7 which will be level 11. So you can go for anything that you want here. Honestly, uh, we got basically our prime spells already set up for this build. So at this point, you could just go and backtrack and get anything that you didn't get here. So Cloud of Daggers works well. Or you could just go for one of these level 4 spells like Freedom of Movement or Confusion since this is an enchantment spell and you can utilize this in Act 3. And finally, we hit level 12 and we get another spell. Again, you can settle for illusion and enchantment spells once you hit this level. That way you get some additional bonus actions that you can use with our gear. So in this case, I just go with fear. And then for our additional feat, since we are melee based, this is a very good time to finally get Savage Attacker. Savage Attacker is really going to help with all of these damage riders. And it's basically free advantage on all of your damage rolls. Next up, we could take a look at the equipment for Astarian. And really, your gear isn't going to have a huge effect until you get into Act 2 and Act 3. So that's going to start with Helmet of Arcane Acuity in Act 2. Once you get this, then you can start using spells like Hold Person, Glyph of Warding Sleep, Hypnotic Pattern, and those are going to have a very high success rate of CCing on the enemy. And that really adds to the whole CC element of a Bard. Then we're going to go with Cloak of Protection for the armor class, but also the constitution saving throw, since a lot of our spells require concentration. And then we're gonna go with the ballist armor. This is going to be the best in slot armor in act three. Not only will you gain a bonus to initiative rolls, but enemies that are in melee range will become vulnerable to piercing damage, which means that that's going to be super useful for your daggers and for your short swords, but also for your skellies. Your skellies will have that vulnerability damage because of their bows. 
Then we're going to go with Gloves of the Automaton that you get in Act 2. This is mainly for our advantage. I feel like this is the best way to gain advantage with this build because Risky Ring will give you that disadvantage to saving throws, which is a very risky, so to speak, because of our concentration spells. So you can go with Risky Ring, but I prefer Gloves of the Automaton. You can also swap this out for something like Hell Dust Gloves or Flawed Hell Dust Gloves if you do plan on going with the Risky Ring with this build. I just go for Evasive Shoes here, mainly for the Armor class, and then I like the Spell Crux Amulet. That way we can restore a level 5 spell slot. But you have some very good amulets here, including Amulet of the Devout for the Spell Save Difficulty class and Amulet of Greater Health. That way you get that advantage on Constitution Saving Throw checks. And then you can use Risky Ring if you do want to pair that up with Amulet of Greater Health. For our rings, Ban of the Mystic Scoundrel will be the best ring that you want to rush for as soon as you hit Act 3. This will allow you to cast Illusion or Enchantment spells as a bonus action, which really opens this build up. And then I just go for Caustic Ban here, but like I said, you could also substitute this for the Risky Ring and the Amulet of Greater Health setup. And then for the weapons, I like going with the Crimson Mischief in the main hand. That way we get that piercing damage bonus by having advantage. And then I go for the Sword of Life Stealing in the offhand because we will get a lot of critical hits from our CC from Hold Person or Hold Monster or Glyph of Warding Sleep, which means that we're going to get that extra 10 necrotic damage every time we land a critical hit. But the reality is you can use any kind of short sword or a dagger between Act 1 and Act 2 until you get to these weapons in Act 3. So anything can work here. The Susser Dagger will be great. Um, Justicia Scimitar or the Knife of the Undermountain King. All of these work out really well. And then for the ranged weapon, I just go with Hell Rider Longbow for initiative. And that's mainly to not use crossbows with this build. But if you do want to use crossbows, you can. But I prefer to go with just the initiative bow because I wanted this to be a melee build. But again, you have the option to use hand crossbows if you want to. And that is our equipment for Astarian. So now we could get into the really fun stuff here and display a combat showcase of Astarian using this build. So I do have Elixir of Bloodlust and Haste activated. That way this fight goes by a little bit faster. And I have my army of summons with my fire elemental and my three skellies. And I will try to showcase their damage as well. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get in position for a nice AoE attack. And if you are using my equipment, you should be starting first an initiative every time. And that is very useful because you have a chance to CC enemies before they can even react. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and use the circuitry interface from our gloves of the automaton. That way we get advantage for 10 straight turns. And now we can do a nice AoE slashing flourish. And I'm going to go ahead and use this on the enemies with the highest HP, which will be right here. And we could activate sneak attack as a reaction. And yeah, that's just crazy how much damage this thing can do. And that is because of the piercing vulnerability damage from our ballist armor. So it makes it to where these enemies take a lot of damage. So now what we can do here is go for another Slashing Flourish, and I'm just going to use it right here on both of these enemies. And now we can go ahead and use a CC move since we do have 10 Arcane Acuity stacks. So I like to use Hold Person here. This is going to be your bread and butter spell, especially once you're able to use this as a bonus action at the beginning of Act 3. So what we can do here is upcast this to a level 5 spell. That way we can target four different enemies here. And I'm just going to go ahead and target the enemies here that have the highest health. And that completely shuts them down, which is a very, very overpowered spell when you use it in this combination here. So now what we can do is just take this enemy out. I'm just going to use a regular attack here. Now we could go over here to this enemy. And I'm going to use a defensive flourish. That way we can increase our armor class by plus four. And we could go ahead, attack again. And then I'm going to go over here, just do a regular attack since this enemy only has 36 health. And then we could move in position over here for this archer. But more importantly, get aura of murder on this enemy because of our ballist armor. So now our skellies will have vulnerability damage added to this enemy. 
So now we could showcase the skeleton damage here, and one reason why I like the skeletons over the zombies is because they deal piercing damage with their ranged attack. So that means that whenever Astarian is using the ballist armor, these enemies are going to be vulnerable to piercing damage, which means extra damage for your skellies. And then also, if they are CC'd like this enemy is, even if you get close to within melee range, you're still going to get the critical with your bows. So let's just go ahead and jump up here. Let's get as close to this enemy as we can. And let's go ahead and use a range attack. And yeah, that's a lot of damage for just one little level 3 skeleton. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the same with this skelly. Let's get him up here. Let's make sure we get him close enough to where we can get that free critical. And do the same with our last one. Let's go ahead and run up here, do another ranged attack, and yeah, 80 damage for three skellies, which is pretty good, I gotta say, for uh, as weak as they are, generally. So now we could go into our fire elemental, we could just warp over here, and then we could get some nice critical damage on this enemy with a multi-attack. Um, this is going to be better because we could actually get multiple criticals, so let's just go ahead and use a multi-attack here. And that's also very good damage. 42 damage for just a regular multi-attack on a fire elemental. That's not bad. So now the fight is basically done at this point and none of my party members took any damage because we had the highest initiative and we were able to clear all of these enemies out by either killing them or with CC. So at this point, let's go ahead and do a main hand attack and finish the fight. So I hope you guys enjoyed my Astarian Bardmancer Rogue build, and I feel like this is such a unique and thematic build for Astarian, and it's unlike all the other Astarian builds that you're probably going to see out there, which is why I really love this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you think about it, and let me know what other companion you want to see next. I'm feeling like doing Gale next, so we'll just see how that goes, and I will see you in the next video.